the Medical Research Council has made it clear that research into ME is something that uh, we are taking very seriously indeed. It is a very big part of the research programme for the future and I hope that we'll be able to report results in due course. When the full details of the trial become known, this will be put down as one of the biggest medical scandals of the 21st century. If you say you're going to do something and you get funded to do it and approved by all kinds of review committees, then you ought to do it. You're not allowed to wiggle out of it. It's not good science, not good statistics. Even if you know nothing more about the PACE trial except that it's a non-blinded trial based on self-report, you know enough to know that, that you cannot rely on that trial. That trial is not a good study. By definition, no matter what the researchers say, no matter what journal has published it, no matter how people defend it, it's fundamentally flawed. Uh, blinding is when in a therapy study, for example, you don't tell the participant what the therapy is supposed to do. You don't tell the participant that they're in the good therapy group uh, instead of the bad therapy group. You come up with a way of hiding that information from the participant so that their self-reports don't become biased by expectation. Because if you're told over and over again, you're getting a fantastic therapy, this is wonderful. When you fill out the questionnaire, you're going to say, oh, the therapy was wonderful, I'm feeling a lot better now. I started to feel like I had to put a positive spin on my answers. I could not be honest about just how bad it was, as that would tell them I wasn't trying and I wasn't being positive enough. When I was completing the questionnaires, I remember second guessing myself and thinking after every answer, is it really that bad? Am I just not looking at things positively enough? We need more than just a self-report that's telling us they don't feel limited. So if we have an actigraph to confirm what they're doing, we'll have a sense of what changes there are objectively, more objectively, than just a self-report where people are trying to put together what their functioning has been. We looked at the minutes of the, uh, the, the management committees and we saw that they dismissed the actometers at the end of the trial because the readings didn't confirm the subjective improvement. And I think that's a massive giveaway because it reveals straight off that they'd become so convinced they were right that if any evidence didn't fit, it was the evidence that was wrong. discovered that the authors had altered the way in which they measured improvement and recovery to increase the apparent benefit of the therapies. Reanalysis shows that the improvement rate fell from 60% to just 21% and the recovery rate from 22 to just 7%. This redefinition, it allowed the investigators to massively exaggerate the success of the trial results. The characterization of the results and the spin that these investigators have applied to the results uh, are not really justified. So as a result of these changes, 13% of patients were already recovered at the start of the study. In other words, congratulations, you are eligible, 
with your consent, you are enrolled in the trial. Oh, congratulations, you're now recovered. Pace is a major case of scientific misconduct and really needs to be investigated at the highest levels of the MRC and the UK academic and medical establishment. It is impossible to have a study in which participants meet outcome thresholds at baseline. If 13% of your participants have met an outcome threshold at baseline and you do not reveal that in your study, that is research misconduct. It is very clear. It's not hard to figure out. <laughs>